Welcome to Ordnance Wargaming. Today we're making this Dawn of War inspired obelisk and we're doing it right now. Subscribers, welcome back. If this is your first time here and you want to improve your wargaming, make your tabletop battles more epic, then be sure to smash the subscribe button, ding the bell, and launch a new to make sure that you never miss a video. Now let's see what you need to make this terrain. So here's the things that you're gonna need to make this piece of terrain. You need some foam to make it out of. Of course, you can get that from any good hardware store. You're gonna need a ruler and pencil to mark out all of your different bits of your terrain with. You're gonna need a knife to cut it out with. You're gonna need some glue to stick things down with, as well as a glue brush, which will allow you to not destroy your good brushes. You need a base coat just to make everything nice and black so that we have something for our other paints to stick to. And of course, a big brush speeds this process up. We need some sandpaper to smooth out our foam. We need some transfers to make everything complete and look really, really mint. And some water so that we can activate the transfers to transfer them onto the terrain. And we also need some acrylic gap filler to join the multiple parts of this obelisk together to get a really nice effect going on the obelisk. And finally, we also need some water and PVA in a spray bottle to seal everything down, which actually that's not the final thing, because we also need, look, you can't really see that, can you? But this bag is full of my gray sand, because as those of you on Facebook know, I dropped the bucket and it smashed. So sand's now in that, but you can use flock or sand or whatever you want to texture the base of your terrain with. Okay, so the first step is to mark and cut out your base. So you want to just grab your pencil and mark a line about that, that sort of size on your MDF that you're going to cut out. Then you just grab your knife, you flick it out and holding it like a pencil, trying not to cut yourself, you start tracing along your line like so. And then you just do that over and over again until it comes out. Or you can use a saw and not be an idiot. Okay, once you've got your base cut out, the next thing you need to do is just bevel off the edges and make it into a nice round disc. So to do that, you just take your knife and run it along the edges like so. And you just do that all the way around the entire base until you have a nice disc. And once you've done the beveling, you have a nice little base, like so. Okay guys, so to make the actual obelisk part of our obelisk terrain, we need some foam cut into a 30 by 30 by 100 rectangular prism. And to do that, I've got my foam board, which is just 30 millimeters thick. I've marked two lines that are 30 mil apart, up to 100 millimeters long. And this is gonna form the obelisk part of our terrain. And to cut it out, all we do is we take our knife, and we just run it along our little markings, trying to get it as straight as possible, like so, just to get a mark, and then you cut a little bit deeper, then a bit deeper, until your piece comes off. Okay guys, so once you have your piece of foam cut out like so, you wanna just neaten up all of the edges. I also put another line here, because this was a bit bowed, and you just use the same process that you did for cutting it out of the main board to neaten it up. And also the ends, you probably want to cut them off if they're smashed up a little bit. The idea is you want the whole thing to be as nice and uniform as possible. Okay guys, so I've cleaned it up as best I can, but as you can see, it's still not nice and flat. So I've gone and grabbed myself some 600 grit sandpaper, and we're just gonna cut out a small section of it, like so. And we're gonna use the sandpaper just to clean it up and make it nice and smooth and flat. Also, these sharp edges, we want to roll them over a little bit as well, as that will improve the final product for us. Part of the reason that we really need to sand this is because, as you may have noticed with the Necron Monument, it didn't come out really nice and smooth, and Necron Living Metals, it's going to be nice and smooth. So, by sanding it, we're just going to get a much better model at the end. And you also want to pick whichever end is your top and which is your bottom. So the bottom, you want to leave nice and rough so that the glue has something to grab onto. But the top, you want to make nice and smooth because that's the bit we're going to be able to see. So this end's going to be my top. And you roll over its edges as well. Bam, and there you go. How good does that look? 
I also recommend wearing a gas mask or breather or maybe even one of those paper masks just because breathing in foam dust is probably not great for your health, but I'm not a doctor. Okay guys, so the next bit that you need is a nice little cube to go on top. So you take your 30 mil foam board and you make a marking 30 mil in from this edge and 30 mil in from this edge. So you have a 30 by 30 cube, which will go on top of our obelisk. And once you've got your cube cut out, you trim it up with your knife and then you sand it down to make it nice and smooth so that it fits onto the top of this nice and neatly. Okay guys, so once you've got your cube all cut out and smoothed over, you want to grab your acrylic gap filler and just put a little bit onto the top of your rectangular prism like so. The reason I'm using gap filler here rather than PVA is because these two bits, the top of them aren't perfectly flush. So when they join together, there's going to be a bit of unevenness and the gap filler will just help fill that out and make it look really nice. And you just press it down like so and the gap filler spreads out and then take your thumb around or any finger around the edge like so and if you need to grab a bit more off the end of your gun you can and just fill in the gaps like so and you try to get it on there as neatly as possible with just a little bit of an indentation but not too much and then get the back of a paintbrush and just push it out so that you have a nice little smooth indent where we're going to have our glowing effect coming out of. Okay, now that we've got the cube attached to the top of our little obelisk thing, we need to stick it down to the base and base coat it. And to do that, all we do is we just get a bit of PVA and stick it down onto the base by putting a dob there and sticking it on. Spreading it out so that we don't get too many nasty textures there. And you just stick it down like so. Make sure that you get the bottom of it nice and flat so that when you stick it down it stands up straight because we don't want it lopsided. Unless of course you're doing one that is lopsided, then you do want it lopsided, obviously. BAM! So now it's all stuck down to its base and base coated and how good is it looking already. Now we just need to give it some colour. So I'm going to cover it entirely in Space Walls Grey. You just grab your brush, throw some on it, I'm not going to worry about using a palette because I'm just going to effectively use the piece of terrain as a palette. And you just coat the entire thing in the space walls grey, including in the little gap that we've created there. Because after that we'll pile on some snot green and then some, what is this, uh, scorpion green, just to get it to glow out of the crevice in there. BAM! So I've now got it all coated with the space walls grey. The next step is to chuck down some Gehenna's gold onto all of the edges, just like so. You just jump onto the edge and just take your brush gently across the edge just to give that edge a nice gold trimming. Not really a highlight, it's more of a trim. And just do that for all of the edges, including these in here. And then, once that's done, we'll get on to making this bit glow. BAM! So there we go, now we've got a nice gold frame on it. How good is it looking already? The next step, and the last step with the paint, is we just need to make the bit in here glow between the top box and the bottom column. And for that, I'm just going to put down some snot green and then some scorpion green off the top just to make it glow a little bit. You can layer up a few more colours with some yellows and some whites to make it glow even stronger if you want to. So now that I've got that filled in with the snot green, now we're going to go over with scorpion green and just lightly brush over it so you can still see some of the snot green from underneath but most of what you're going to see is scorpion green and we're not going to go out quite as far from the center on this one as well. So to do this one, you take some of your snot, sorry, scorpion green, not snot green, snot green was the last one, and you just brush a bit off it, not quite dry brushing, but so your brush is still wet, like so. And you just run it in there ever so lightly over it and you get a nice glowing effect like so really simply. And of course after this is dry you can go over with some yellows and even some white to make it glow even more and even more intensely if you want to. So I'm going to finish this off and then the next thing we're going to do is just put some transfers on it just to finish it off before we texture the base and seal it. Okay so once you've got the green all down and you've got your glow finished you move on to transfers. So we're going to get one of these transfers and we're going to put it on there. To do that, first we just need to cut out the shape. I'm going to grab from this point up on this just because it's not quite long enough to get the entire piece in. So you just take your knife 
and your cut around your transfer, trying to get as close as you can without nicking the transfer that you want itself. And the sharper your knife is, the easier this is going to be. So now I have that transfer like that. I'm going to transfer the pattern from there onto the terrain. It says 30 seconds, but I find that 30 seconds is not quite long enough to get it to actually detach when it's cold. If you use warm water, it should work quicker. But if you're using cold water, you need to leave it in the water for a bit longer. Otherwise, it won't come off properly and you'll mess the whole thing up. So you just take it and submerge it in your water, like so. And then you wait. Okay, so once you've soaked your transfer for long enough, I'd recommend experimenting with a few just to make sure that you get it right. Especially if you're using a transfer like I did where there's only one on the sheet. You don't want to go to carving up multiple sheets if you don't have to. So just make sure it's nice and soaked. And you can just test to see, and I think this one might actually be breaking. Anyway, we'll try it and see what happens. So you take your terrain, like so, and you just try, oh, there we go, it is sliding. And you want to make sure that the whole thing is moving before you try to, yeah, it broke there. But that's okay, because we'll just brush the first bit on like so once you've got it moving up a little bit you can use your brush to move the rest of it so get it in position then you slide the rest down being gentle because especially if you're using a longer transfer like this it's very very easy to break the damn things so we're going to get that in position so that it lines up with the bit that it broke use the brush nope don't have quite enough off there to use the brush to hold it at this point. It also helps if the surface you're going on to is really, really smooth. Otherwise it can be a little bit challenging. That gets a bit more there, so maybe we can hold out with the brush now. Slide it down into position. Hold it with your brush. And slide the thing off. Sliding it down the piece of terrain, like so. And then that bit where there was the break, you just want to just try to nudge it in so that it's nice and clean. And there we go. We have our transfer transferred onto our obelisk. And you put one of them on each side or as many as you want. And I'm going to put a few up here as well just to finish it off. When you do your transfer, if you flex the card back and forth after you take it out of the water, it helps separate the transfer from the card without breaking it. So that it makes it easier to transfer it onto the terrain or your model if you're doing models. BAM! So now all the transfers are applied and how good is that looking? The last couple of steps that we need to do is just to base and seal it. So to do that, as usual, we take our wood glue and we just generously dollop it around the edges. Then we get our glue brush, make sure the bristles are nice and loose because the glue will make them become less loose over time. And we just spread the glue out all over the base, like so. When you're applying your glue, you want to start from the midway around your base and then work out. And then once you've worked out, you work back in just so that you don't get huge globs of glue onto the base of your obelisk. And then right at the end, as usual, you just come in with your brush and try to get around the base, having it climb up the obelisk as little as possible because we don't want sand to be climbing up it too much. Little bit's fine, but not too much. Then, once you've got all of your glue applied, you take some of your sand and just sprinkle it over the top or use flock or whatever you want to use to texture your base with. And then, as usual, you pick it up and you shake the excess off I don't know why that's stuck up top. You shake the excess off like so, and you let it dry. Okay, so now that our glue holding our sand down is nice and dry, we can grab our PVA and water and just seal it all down. So as usual, you just take your PVA and you just give it a nice soaking. And you want to make sure that you do cover down the sides of it as well because the PVA will also help to hold those transfers on so that your terrain lasts longer 
and it'll help blend in where the shiny bit of the plastic from the transfer meets the matte bit of the paint. It'll just blend all of that together nicely. Now you set it somewhere to dry, and once it's dry, you're all done, and you can start playing some games with it. So there you go, guys. That's how you make yourself an epic Dawn of War inspired obelisk for your gaming tables. If you found this video useful, please smash the like button so that we know that you guys like it so that we can keep making content you guys like. And if you have an idea for some terrain you'd like to see us make, then chuck it in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you. And if you want to improve your wargaming, make your tabletop battles more epic, then be sure to smash the subscribe button, ding the bell, and launch a nuke to make sure that you never miss out on a video.